old are you? Well, I'm 59 years old right now, and uh, I will be 60 on August 27th of this year. Sipu, how long have you been studying martial arts? Since 1966. Why? How would you say uh, martial arts has uh, helped your your uh, your life as a person? Oh, it's made me more uh, aware of of things and people and potential threats. However, I still take people at a face value. I guess that's my my uh, how would you say? My problem sometimes I trust people too much and they take advantage of uh, kindness for weakness and uh, I, I guess I'm just a trusting person but uh, I enjoy teaching the martial arts it's, it's helped me a lot and helped me in, in learning more about myself as I teach uh, Wing Chun or Soryu Karate or uh, Eskrima and uh, I enjoy it that's my pastime I don't drink I don't smoke I don't do drugs you know once in a while I'll have a cappuccino but a decaf or tea but uh, uh, I like I enjoy I'm just a boring person. I just like martial arts and that's it, you know. So with uh, Wing Chun in particular, how would you say uh, Wing Chun could be effective against your everyday uh, fighter on the street? Well, Wing Chun is a very brutal, can be cruel martial art against the regular street fighter. It doesn't matter how s strong or how athletically uh, uh, fit this uh, opponent of yours is you're not going to you're going to compete with him on a different level you're going to be using strategy techniques and your reflexes are going to be faster because you train in chi sao most of the time and it's based on your footwork not based on how many miles you can run you know i'm 60 years old but i i'm going to be 60 years old but i can still i i know i can i not i don't think i know i can still defend myself against a younger opponent on the street I was in uh, in the Navy in 1972, and some of my uh, travels took me to Hong Kong, to Taiwan, Philippines, uh, Vietnam. And uh, but I got into karate. And there was no kung fu in Austin, Texas, in 1966. So I uh, got into a school the only school of karate in central Texas, in Austin, which was Soryu Karate, under Grandmaster Joe Alvarado. And uh, he had trained in 1962 in Japan, in Sasebo, under the founder of Soryu, under Michio Koyasu. So I was 14 years old when I started learning karate. And what uh, got me interested in Kung Fu during that time was uh, the Green Hornet with Bruce Lee you know, playing the part of uh, Kato. And, you know, I was just interested in Kung Fu, in Karate, or any martial art. I needed to learn how to, to defend myself. So, when I was in Taiwan, I studied Wing Chun, however briefly, but what I learned from, from Sifu Tan was Wing Chun, and I practiced it and kept it up. And as a result, I improved. And later, seven years later, I became the student of Long Ting in his uh, Wing Chun organization. And during the time that he was pioneering Wing Chun here in America, there were five of us, and I was the only one in Texas, and the only Wing Chun uh, representative of Long Ting in the whole state of Texas. And the other guys were in Arizona. There were four guys in Arizona, uh, Keith Sonnenberg, Robert Jacquet, uh, Steve Fredericks, and another guy, I forgot his name, and then me. And so, but I had already had background experience in, in full contact fighting from the 60s. So, uh, you know, I represented Long Ting here in, in Texas. I went to different schools and uh, challenged people back then, you know, and it was a code of honor to be able to go and fight. You know, you're not going to back down and call the police. Since Alvarado is my first teacher in the martial arts. Under Tan, uh, 
you know, the emphasis was on, on well, his, we called it white crane, white crane Wing Chun. So, I don't know whether it was authentic white crane Wing Chun or whatever, you know. I'm a 20 year old guy and I don't ask those questions, I'm, I'm there to learn. And uh, he emphasized uh, a lot of footwork and elusive movement and uh, more de defensive movements, uh, not so much the straight line punches, but uh, more uh, like moving, moving away, moving away from the opponent and uh, deflecting more. But he, his movements were like more flower, or the flowery style, you know. And of course, his chain punches or chain punches are going to be straight. But you know, I always modify stuff that's going to fit me and my personality. I'm not going to be like a robot, not to any style. And so I had my own individuality, but still kept the concepts. Although briefly, you know, I expounded on them and I, I made it fit me. And, you know, uh, I made it effective for me. So if it's effective for me, I know it's going to work because I'm going to test things out. That's the type of person that I am. And so he emphasized a lot of that, elusiveness, uh, flowing, and then uh, to more defensive techniques, not so much aggression. Because he believed that if you're more, your defense is good, your, your offense is going to be better. So that was my training with Sifu Tan in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. The way Sifu Long Ting is, you have to start from the beginning. It doesn't matter what rank you are. You could be a 10th Dan in, in Super Kung Fu. He's going to make you start from the beginning. All right, that's the way Sifu Long Ting is. Okay, he's going to check your, your stances, your, your character to abduction stance. He's going to tell you it's wrong. Everything is wrong that you do. That's the way Sifu Long Ting is. I know him, so Sifu Long Ting can be very funny, uh, humorous, but at the same time very strict. And he was very strict on me. So he had me do lots of hours of uh, bong sao and turning stance, and lots of hours of tan sao punch and gan sao punch. And many, many hours of chi sao, many hours. Uh, chi sao training and thousands of chain punches. So Long Ting believes, Sipu Long Ting believes in in being aggressive, take the fight, take the fight to the opponent. If you hit him once, don't stop. Don't stop till the opponent is on the ground. So uh, that's that's how Sipu Long Ting I remember as his student, I had to start from the ground up. And you don't dare show what you know from previous styles, you know? It's, it's uh, disrespectful. He, he doesn't care about uh, what you've learned. You're there to learn under him, and that's it. Yeah, that's the way Long Ting Sifu was in those days. I don't know about now, he might have changed. Since he's a little bit older, uh, no offense Sifu, you know, but we're all getting a little bit older, and sometimes we get more mellower. So, uh, that's what I, oh, we had wonderful times, me and Sipu, uh, Long Ting. I took him to a tamale house uh, on Congress Avenue. And, uh, and we ordered tamales. So I got my tamales, you know, and I got him one. And uh, I, I peeled the cover off mine to eat it. Then he just stuck his in his mouth. But it had the the you know, the, the cover on, the, the leaf, the corn leaf. I said, Sipu, why you have to take, oh, he said, oh, oh, I know, I know. We have this in Hong Kong. Because you have tamales in Hong Kong? And so, we had a great times out here, you know, in, here in Texas, not only in training, but also as a Sipu and student relationship. <laughs>